Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. In today's Bible study, we have Brother Gio with us. We're going to be diving into John chapter 17, verses 1 to 26. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me and end off with a prayer by Brother Gio. If you guys can, bow your heads and close your eyes so we can get into word for the day. Father God, I thank you for this day that you've made. I will rejoice and be glad to God. I pray that you continue to be with me and my brother today, God. We pray as I and to be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that your message will be able to be revealed to us, God. We pray that you'll be able to bring the message to our head, God, to, that we're able to discuss your word, God. We pray that we continue to be on this journey, to learn more about you, to educate ourselves, to be able to sharpen iron, God. We just pray that you continue to be with us. Let your message fill in us and be able to comprehend your word today, God. In Jesus' name, holy name, amen. Today, we'll be leading by Brother Gio. After saying all these things, uh, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. So Jesus had just finished talking to his disciples in the previous chapter. Um, he was telling him that he has to leave. He's going to send them the comforter. Um, you know, he's now breaking it down to them plain. He's no longer speaking in Proverbs or speaking in parables. And so now the time for him to go is, is getting closer. So Jesus starts to pray. He looks up to the Father and he says, the Father, the hour has come, glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. Um, for you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed you to the ones you gave me <clears throat> from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed it on to them. The message you gave me they accepted it and know that i came from you and they believe you sent me okay uh okay i'll read i'll read the two more verses uh up to 10. my prayer is not for the world but for those you have given me because they belong to you all who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me so they bring me glory talk to me some some, some, good, some good stuff in here talk to me what you got just it's so much good stuff in there. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. <laughs> but you're having a conversation with God telling God that I have done my work. Your people, as in the disciple, have believed what I've told them. I've known that you that my words are not of my own. My words are coming straight from you. Everything that I've done is coming straight from you. And now and before he like started to explain to them exactly in like plain English what is about to happen. And he's explained them in, in proper English what's about to happen. Yeah. Uh let me let me let me go back in the scripture. Mm -hmm. So let me help you out. All right. So Jesus had just finished breaking down exactly what's about to happen. Like he gave them the story. No longer speaking of what's to come and this that. Like now he's like, all right, I'm praying. Now now Jesus is praying. For who? His disciple. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. Jesus is saying, all right, the time has come for me to go. How do you think he's going to glorify the son? By lifting him up into heaven. And so that people can see that, whoa, this wasn't just some regular Joe Schmo walking the streets. This was indeed the son of God. This was indeed God himself in the flesh. And then ultimately God, the father will be glorified because Jesus always did everything in the name of God, the father. He always spoke about, I do these things because my father gives me the authority and power to do them. I do these things because my father has sent me to do these things. It's like, I'm not doing these things with my own will. I do these through the will of the father. So if Jesus be glorified, then God the Father be glorified, right? Be lifted up. 
be he's gonna be believed on, believed on, right? And he says, For you have given me given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him, right? He's talking about the people who believe. Um now when you believe in Jesus, right? You have eternal life. Believing when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're considered safe. Right? Once you say, okay, this is my Jesus Christ is God, He's my Lord and Savior, He died for my sins, He rose again on the third day, He's the Son of God. Like once you believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you're safe. And 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 once you do that, this is your gift in verse three. This is your promise, as a, as a matter of fact. It says, and this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Um, this, I believe, is written in Greek, uh, the New Testament, this portion, right? Um, just, just, a, just a quick fun fact. When it says to know, um, I know in the Old Testament it was it was intimacy. It was like <clears throat> like man and woman. Like it says, it says Adam knew and Adam knew his wife. It didn't say Adam had sex with his wife. It said Adam knew his wife. So when two people knew each other, that means they got really intimate. And so notice how Jesus is using the same term to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ. This is the way to eternal life. So if I'm gonna know Jesus and and if I'm gonna know God. I want to know him on an intimate level. How do you get to know somebody? Having conversations with them. Right. You you spending time with them. You, right. Yeah, you spending time with them and having a conversation with them. Um, and so verse four says, I brought I brought glory to you here on earth by completing. This is important. I brought glory to you. This is Jesus saying he brought glory to God the Father. Here on earth by. How did he do it? How did he glorify the Father? He glorified the Father by doing the Father's work that he was sent to do. And not only doing the work, but always acknowledging that my word is not of my own. What I'm doing is coming straight from the Father. So not only by doing the work, but the acknowledgement. By completing the work that God gave him. That's how we glorify God. Being obedient. Simple. God is pleased with us when we are obedient. And we have to get to a place where being obedient to God is what we seek to do with joy, not grudgingly, not with an attitude like, God, you woke me up this morning and I am well aware it is only because of you that I have the breath of life in my lungs, that I am moving, I am, that I even exist and have my being. So because of that, I find great joy. Just tell me what you want to do. Like, tell me what you need me to do. Like, I find great joy in fulfilling the work that you have set out for me. Every day, moment by moment, the work that God has for you can change. People often, like, like they, they, they're heavy on, oh, what's your purpose? You got to find your purpose. And I remember when I first heard that, when I first, you know, got saved, it was just like, now I'm racking my brain, like, yo, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, what? Like, it's bad enough when you, you know, when you're a child, I mean, you're like, you know, you're a child and you're, you're young, you're growing up, they're like, yo, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, and you're like, you know, oh, yo, listen, I mean, I'm good at playing video games, eating cereal and watching TV. Like, I, <laughs> I don't have no interest in anything, so it just, so you got that pressure on you. So now it's like this is this is probably like times a hundred because now you're just talking not just a, a job or career that you're seeking out or profession, but you're talking about your spiritual, your divine, your profound purpose. What is what does God, Almighty God, want little old me to do to make an impact to change in the world? And 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 the simplest way to do that is again to get to know him, right? And he'll guide you. And it and it's season by season, moment by moment, it changes. Right? Like like your purpose could just be to open up the door for a person. 
because they were just having a horrifying day. The day was just horrible. And all you had to do was hear the Holy Spirit tell you, hey, oh, hold the door for that person. And just say hello. And then that person just, oh my gosh, thank you so much. No one has spoken to me. I just felt like, you know, I was invisible, like I was alone. And, and here you are, you're just saying hello. And you just said there's something so small as to open up the door for me. Like, thank you, God bless you. Guess what you just did? You completed the work God gave you to do. And, and now you're glorifying the God. You're glorifying God the Father. Yeah, and that's that's amazing. Uh, referring to you, I, I don't know about you, but like since I was like, I say like round five or six, I knew like I was special. And I knew like I was going to do great things. I don't know why I knew that, but like I knew that. And I was always trying to find my purpose. Like, like what am I good at? Try singing. Yeah, that didn't work. Try um dancing. That didn't work. I tried, I think, somewhere between think, somewhere between six to ten different things surrounding the church and outside of the church to find like what am I good at? What was my purpose? But like I I just never uh stopped trying. And once once YouTube started is how I was able to find like my purpose. My purpose is to use my speech, whether I'm using it for motivational speaking, preaching, or just any type of um various area. And it's a natural, it's a natural born talent. Like I never practiced pre um preaching uh or practice preaching. I just went ahead and do it. And that's not to be arrogant or nothing. Every everybody got their natural born talent where they're just naturally good at something. You don't have to um you didn't have to put in work in the beginning. But as you go and you want to perfect your craft, you're going to have to put in work. So I do practice it now. But originally, it was just something that I was like, you know what? I'm doing motivational speaking, but it kind of sounds like I'm preaching. So let me try it. And I just wrote, wrote up something and just went ahead and did a video. And that's how exactly it started. But like for you, did you kind of like knew like you had like you were special, like you had some type of divine purpose or like you were going to do great things? Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't born. I wasn't raised or born in the church. I clearly had a different upbringing. How I, I was in the street. <laughs> um, but even so, now that you think about it, like I was around the bad things of the world, but. It was strange, like 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 I was just like I was known for playing basketball and 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 but even then, like when things when I had the opportunity to do something that I wasn't supposed to do, like my friends or like the OGs, right? They kind of just nah, kid, stay to the side, don't worry about it. Like you're gonna be out, take it out the hood, because they thought that like they just saw something in me, like oh, you're gonna play basketball, you're gonna be great, you're gonna like so we don't want you getting caught up in all of this stuff. So, I mean, from that perspective, then yeah, but in terms of like a divine, like profound, like God, this is what I want you to do. God, Geo is what I want you to do from God. Like I don't, but now, you know what? And I'm looking back at it. I had to go and endure all those things in the world to now be able to relate to all the youth that are in our church, right? And like, now I can guide them and, and be a mentor, a big brother to them because I experienced it, I lived it, and now I can try to save them from the same thing. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, and I say exact same way with me, with all the things I've been through, and at different ways from Jill, because Jill experienced way harder and like things stuck than me. But like in my situation, especially with, I say that bullying situation I went through, it, it, I'm just learning so much um, of like how I can help people. And I'm learning that that created everything that I'm doing right now. The fire sparked in me to do YouTube from that. Um, in case you guys are new, whatever, I went through bullying a period of, I think, like six years from the time. Well, I experienced it when I was living in Ghana, but um, from the time that I got here, 2012, to all the way to like eighth grade, that's around 2018. That's about like six years. And it was a it was a lot of hardship. And in sixth grade, I created this channel 
because I wanted to be that motivation for somebody. I had nobody there tell me like things are going to get better. You're going to be okay and stuff like that. So that's why I started to make videos in the first place. Then that switched five years later to everything that I'm doing now. So I, I always see that God always turn, take bad situation and turn it into good. Uh, I'm thankful, but at the same time, not thankful for that situation. I'm thankful for it because it sparked this, but at the same time, that was a lot I went through. So I'm kind of not really thankful for all that pain and, and trauma that it brought, but I am thankful for um, what I have done for myself, my career, and just growing as a person. But we'll get back into the scripture for today. <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry about it. Sometimes your testimony may impact some people. You never know, right? Um, I think I remember I heard like the word testimony broken down. Uh, it was like if you like the way it's spelled. If you break it down, test. I'm on why testimony. Like, why am, why am I on this test? Why am I being tested? And then you find out later on. Look at your face. <laughs> like a light bulb. Like, Woo! Test and money test. I'm on. Why? Why am I on this test? Actually, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm on why. Okay, that, made, that makes perfect sense. All right. Uh... So notice how Jesus is starting off his prayer, right? He's praying to God about himself. He's praying to God about the believers. He's praying to, praying to God about the Christians that believe in him, right? This is his, like, this is a look like, this is a little bit different than what we call the Lord's prayer. All right, so notice that the, this is the Lord's prayer, right? A little bit different than than what we call the Lord's Prayer, like Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us a day out of the bread. All right, it's, that's more of like a generic type thing, right? But now he's getting a little bit more deeper, like his petitions or his 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 questions, and 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 what he's saying to the Father is a bit more. You get to see the inside of Jesus' heart. God, thank you. I've done everything that you need me to do. I want you to be glorified. I want you for your son to be glorified. I want restoration for the eternal glory. I'm praying for the safety of the believers from the world and the evil one. Um, I'm praying for the sanctification of the believers. I'm praying for the spiritual unity of the believers. I'm praying that the world themselves, they may believe and uh, I'm praying that the believers may be with him in heaven, with me in heaven to behold and share my glory. Jesus is like really pouring out his heart to God and interceding on behalf of those who believe and those who don't believe. It's the Bible says it's not my will. It's not the will of God that any should perish but that all should have everlasting life, that all should have everlasting life. God doesn't want anybody to die. But some people's hearts are just so far removed from the gospel. They just don't want to hear it. And unfortunately, they just, you know, hopefully they can turn things around and, and begin to believe, but you know, we just pray for them, right? Just like, just like Jesus prayed for them. So, um, verse five. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. That, I don't know why that was a simple verse. But for me, that... In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. The word was with God in the beginning. Like, when you think about beginning, I'm like, like you got God and you have time. Like, like so this is time inside here. And then you have God over here somewhere. And he's looking at time. Like, God 
stands outside of time and he looks at it and he and he's just controlling it. And in order for there to be a beginning, somebody had to start it. Jesus, God, the Trinity, they started time. They started the beginning before the world began. Like, I'm just, just imagine, like it's three, like you, like you, your brother, like you, uh, Eon and Elton, just imagine you're just, you're just chilling together. I'm like, you know what? I think we should start an earth thing called the earth. Let's, let's go start the world. Let's, just, let's go do something. And yeah, yeah, I just, bring me into the glory. I, I wanna know what glory looks like, what glory feels like to experience glory. Man, I don't know, that was just, I had my, you know, that was it for me, but verse 60 says, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. So there are, um, I'm not entirely sure, but I know in Revelations, it talks about, I believe 144,000 people that have never disobeyed God. They always kept his word. Yeah, when we get, we will do a revelation study. Yeah, it's, it's like a select few. That's true. Got to look at it's the it's in the word. I mean, we got we can look at it a little bit we, deeper. We definitely got to look at that. If they said 100 or like 20, I believe that. But they said uh, they said 100 and what? 144,000. Yeah. I believe it's 12,000 from the 12 tribes. 12,000 uh -huh. from each of the 12 tribes. So it's 144,000. Seriously, I wish I would have been one of them. But you don't know. And that's the thing. If you read the Bible, you don't know if you're not them. Because those people that we call the Jews, like, we don't know if, like, those were, well, those, they descended from the children of, the, of, 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 of Israel. Like, those are, like, the descendants. We don't, like... I don't know. I should say. I don't say. I don't say. We. I don't know if I'm not from the tribe, right? I, I'm like some people say. Oh, if you so if 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 the story of Jesus started in 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 Africa, if like Moses was a black African, he, at, Moses is a black man, right? Like Egypt, he was in Egypt, but like he's, he's African. You know. Africans are brown. You see the Jews, they not brown, <laughs> right? Like, so you very well could be the black man. Like, like I don't know. I don't want to get too crazy into that, but. Yeah, I, I, I get it. But that whole fact is confusing because everybody be like, so like, were they white? Were they <laughs> black? And just. That's yeah, I, I, I try not to get caught up in the colors and stuff like that. I just know that where my heart needs to be, and it needs to be with Christ. That's for me. That's what matters. So, um, however, knowing who you are and where you come from is very important. All right. So, um, I, I did say that one day I was going to look into deeper into that because I think when you know who you are, or you know where you come from. You think different, you act different, you just you are different now. It's like like when you knew when you knew you were a Christian, when you realize you're a Christian, you act differently. Like you know your identity, like I know who I am now. Okay, cool. This is how I need to be acting. So if I if I study one day and realize that I'm a Jew and not a Gentile, I'm like, whoa. Okay. I got a lot of promises from God the Father concerning my life. Okay, now I can look forward to these promises. Now I can act accordingly, right? Getting in, getting in alignment with his word so that I can receive the promises that he had for me. Um, but I mean, I didn't get there yet, but that is a study that I look to get into. All right, so um, again, I don't know if the 144,000 and referred to in Revelations is the same that's talked about in verse six here, but you know, that's something that we could also go back to another day. All right, so verse seven says, now they know Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. 
They accepted it and know that I came from you and they believe you sent me. They know that everything I have is a gift from you. Jesus is the gift to the world. Nobody has to work for a gift. Gifts are freely given out of the kindness and the heart of the gift tour. And God the Father gifted Jesus to us so that we would not have to endure the suffering for suffering of the penalties of sin, which is death. And so now that we know everything, like Jesus is clearly spilling the beans, like, God, you gave me these gifts, you gave them the gift, and they re they believed it, they accepted it, and they believed that you sent me. And look at verse 9, so now he says, my prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. He's interceding on behalf of the believers. It says, all, all who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. It says, now I'm departing from the world, verse 11. They are staying in this world, but I'm coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. Now he's praying for their protection in the world. Remember verse 16, he says, these things, verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now he's praying to God the Father in my name, Please, God, protect them. In the name of Jesus, protect them, right? So now you know how we say, you know, we say our prayer and we close out in Jesus' name, amen? That's why. Like God said, remember he said in the previous chapter, if you ask anything in my name, God the Father will grant it. That's why we say in Jesus' name when we close out our prayer. But you also got to be careful what you ask. Well, no, I'm saying yeah. I get yeah. that, but like just saying that to anybody, don't ask the guy to get revenge on somebody and they're praying in Jesus' name, amen. It's not it well, well think you. about it. I wouldn't go that far because look at David, look at his Psalms. God told God, I mean, David was praying to God for his enemies to be slain. Like they persecuted me, like you know, I guess. See, people think that God is not like, like God is, he's multifaceted. Like he's, he has many different characteristics. You have God, the warrior, you have God, the father, you have God uh, who chastens us. Like, like when you do bad, he disciplines us, gives us a pow pow on the butt, right? Like God does a lot. God just wiped out a whole Sodom and Gomorrah. God moved a whole group of people out of their land so that the nation of Israel could in, inhabit that land. And so, and so sometimes, sometimes this confuses people. Like, how can a God just come and cause, cause war and cause disease and, and, and cast people out of their land? And people like, that's not, a, why would a God be like that? Why would God cause things like that to happen? That's not a God, but no one takes, no one goes to the next step. And they're like, I'm trying to figure out why would he do that? You have to read, right? When you are so far removed from God and your heart is just so, you know how people say a hard head, make a soft backside, like, or, or how y'all say in the Caribbean, your ears are hard. Like you just, Like your parents, they kind of just give up. Like, you know what? Whatever. You're going to do what you want to do. Go ahead. You're going to figure it out. Like, God is like, he, like he, he's a merciful God. But if you just keep saying, never mind you, God, I don't, got, I don't want nothing to do with you. It's just like, okay. I'm going to, and, and I think I think it's in Romans. He'll say, he says, I, I, let the, I gave them over to a reprobate mind. I gave them over to a mind that's just, impossible to receive what I'm trying to give them, the good news that I have come to save them and give you life. You're just so caught up in your own way, your own will that you don't want to receive what I'm giving you. 
Those are the people that God is removing from the land. Those are the people that God is wreaking havoc on. Those are the people that God is raining fire and brimstone and burning them. Like, they just don't want God. And they say, don't bite the hand that feeds you. God made you. Like, he, he's the reason why you are you. He's the reason why you are a you. Like, pay respect to the big homie. It's simple. <laughs> it's, a, it's simple, right? Put some respect on his name. Put some respect, right? And with a K at the end, put some respect on his name. So, um, Jesus is praying on behalf of the believers that though they be in the world, that God will still protect them, right? And provide for them. Verse 12 says, during my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. There's power in the name of Jesus. They were protected by that name. He says, during my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. So when you say Jesus in the atmosphere, something has to happen. Power in that name. I guarded them so that no one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scriptures foretold. Who's that one he's talking about? Talking about Judas and the reason yeah. why he do this was not stop because what, G, what, I said Jesus, what Judas was going to do was needed to happen in order to fulfill the um, glory of God in order to fulfill uh, Jesus' mission because if he would have curveballed it, uh, we wouldn't have the opportunity to go to God to ask him for forgiveness for our sins. It had to happen, but the, the good, even even in his deeds, he still had an opportunity to repent. He still had an opportunity to make it into heaven, but instead, you know what he's decided to do? After he realized who Jesus was and after he realized what he did, he went and killed himself. You have no right to take your life because you didn't give yourself life. Your life is not your own. Your life belongs to God. Oh, so you want to take matters into your own hands. All right, cool. I got you. I'm going to show you, I'm gonna show you a thing or two. So he, he had an opportunity to come back to God, but, you know, he was just so overtaken by his sin. He was just like, you know what? That's it. I'm done. So verse 13 says, now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world, so they would be filled with joy. All right? So he's giving them an encouragement and building them up. I have given them your word. And the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. So if you find somebody hating on you because you're a Christian, be, understand that that's, your, that's fulfilling the scriptures because you, uh, Jesus just said it. People are not going to like you because you, uh, you believe in Jesus, right? You can't say the name Jesus in certain countries. I believe in Egypt. I think they're called Coptics. And I think they, I think, I think that's the term Coptic. You, you know what I'm saying? And then they believe in Jesus, but it's a predominantly Muslim or Islamic, you know, um, believing country. You say that name Jesus, you might lose your head. But Jesus said that. Be prepared, right? And verse 15 says, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. It's important. That's important to me. So when God the Father took God the Son back up into heaven, why didn't he just take the disciples with him? Because their mission was not yet completed. My man, that's um, it. And that's something that I learned, especially like with being alive and dead. Um, if somebody died, that means that their mission have been completed. If you're still here, that means that your mission has not yet been completed. Uh, still got work. During, yeah, during my um little situations where that almost was present, uh, I made it out through those situations because my mission is not done. Uh, my job is not done. Me using my talent is not done. Me reaching people is not done. My goals and everything that that uh, God want me to do is not done yet. So always remember that uh, that if you got breath in your lungs, that means that your job is not done, your mission is not 
done. Mm -hmm. Not done. Yep. Verse 16 says, They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. The I can't think of scripture right now, but a scripture just came. Um, how can a young man cleanse his ways? And it says, By taking heed to the word of God. And verse 17 says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Like, that's how you change. People try to change using their own strength until they're faced with adversity. And then they realize, all right, I'm not that strong as I thought I was. Like, all right, I'm going to drink one more. Stop drinking soda. I'm going to drink water. Um, I'm, I'm gonna stop eating candy and cookies, and I'm going. I'm gonna stay on a strict diet, and it, you know it works. Some people make it even up to 30 days, and then day 31, they just they had a bad day. They're tired. Someone offers them a cookie and some some juice, and then that's it, right? But when you when you have the word of God on the inside of you, I believe and can testify that it changes you. That the word has the power to change you. Hot, but you got to get the word inside of you. You got to take the time to read it. Yeah, you do. I could piggyback on that. With my process of changing into the new version of me, I did the little thing that called try it on your own. That didn't work. Um, that we all didn't do work. it. We all do it. it. It didn't work at all. But once I started to lie myself with God, started praying to him, and not only praying to him, but making sure I do my part, because that's something I learned. God can help you, but if you don't help yourself, it's useless. So I, I made sure I went to the Father, uh, went into his word, and just continue to pray and work on myself each and every single day. And I, I, I can say the Ezra now is not the Ezra 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, however you want to call it years ago it's not it's not the same person and you're not going to be the same five, five, five ten years, years from that i'm just going to continue to change I'm, I'm more calm uh i'm more i'm very more respect respectable um as in myself and respecting others i'm very more wise make better decisions and just overall i just know that i'm going to change is Changing is a um, continuous thing. It's it's never going to stop. That pretty much is going to stop it. But other than that, you're going to continue to change. Keep keep learning and growing until the day you go. That's it. Just, just keep learning and keep growing. Like, and I think a lot of reason why Christians end up not becoming spiritually mature is because they're not learning and growing from the word of God. They just, you know, some of us just rely on the word that we get on Sundays, but not too many people go home and read the word and allow the word to penetrate their hearts and allow the word to really saturate them and ask the Holy Spirit to help their heart to be changed by the word that they just received. And they just become spiritually immature or, or they just, they're not growing spiritually. And, you know, that's just the unfortunate part. Um, so we, we got to eat every day. Just like we eat physically, we got to eat spiritually every day. God told Joshua to read the word daily and meditate on it day and night so that you can keep the word. He told him specifically to keep the commandments of Moses. Everything I told him, you have to keep it. Meditate on it day and night. Read it daily. Just think about that. Would you purposely go a whole day without eating, like on purpose? Of course not. Mm -hmm. Nah, I need, I need, I need physical food. Like I need spiritual food. Nah, you need spiritual food. Like you need. Okay, <laughs> I said it back with my. I need uh, that's cool, spiritual not. food. That's like I need way, physical food. I'm saying, like you, like I think it's more important for us to eat spiritually than it is for us to eat physically. Like right. That, that's that's where I am anywhere in my in my walk right now. I feel like I need to eat spiritually more than I need to eat physically because I'm still prone to making mistakes. Like I still have things in me that need to be worked out, and the Holy Spirit is revealing those things to me because before I didn't even know that these things were problematic. 
until the Holy Spirit reveals it to me. But how can he do that? Unless I spend time with him. Do you mind sharing? What? Um, one of the things that is problematic that he's changing. Absolutely. I was, um, I think I was talking about, I was alluding to this last week when, when we had all the brothers on the line with us. Mm-hmm. Um, like just this aggression, anger, I have no idea where it came from. And here it is, I thought I was under control of it, but I'm, I'm not even close. And I was spending some time reading about the Holy Spirit a few weeks back. And he told me like, yo, he was like, listen, you gotta get it together. He told me I had to look at the world from a different lens. And the only way I can do that is I had to get more of Jesus inside of me. I had to, it's not how much of the Holy Spirit I have, it's how much of the Holy Spirit I give, how much of me I give to the Holy Spirit to take control of. I have to free myself of this thing I call, what I like to think is control. I'm not in control. So when I'm able to receive more of Jesus by reading the word, I can look at the world differently. So when things come my way, I know how to respond to them. I'm not responding to them out of my own flesh, but I'm responding to them through the spirit, the power of the spirit working inside of me. So it's a constant battle. I want to say maybe the aggression, the anger came from the childhood and lifestyle that I had growing before coming to church. As I I told you, I was in the street, right? And you know, it was, you couldn't be soft you couldn't be weak you had to show aggression you had to show anger they respected that they feared that if not you get ran over kicked on and so i carried that over into now i'm in fatherhood now i'm i'm married you know and now it's and i can't treat my wife and children my family i can't treat them this way i can't continue to hurt the loved ones and the holy spirit broke me down bro broke me down i heard a lot of people i'm shouting at them and they're just like yo you gotta chill you gotta chill and because of this anger and aggression that resides in me i became sick and so that was a sickness that i was talking about last week on the call and i i i think i read about what paul he said he had a thorn in his side and he was he was praying to God to remove it, but he realized that God, I don't need you to remove it because when I'm weak, you you make me strong. And it was just like I too had that same revelation. Like I don't don't take the sickness until I've been made whole. Don't take it away until I've learned my lesson. I want you to build me up in you because I want that sickness to be a constant reminder of what you are doing in me. So that when I made whole, the sickness goes with it. When I'm, when I'm able to deal with my family and friends in love and in compassion, and I'm no longer filled with this aggression and this rage, then I know that I've been made whole. And, and the only way to do that is what he just said in verse 17, teach them your truth, your true word which is the truth, make them holy by your truth. The only way I can be made holy is by the truth. I gotta read the word, gotta get it inside of me so that it can work. It can do what it has to do. I could relate to you um, because that bullying situation left me in anger and I gained a real bad attitude problem. Right. To um, elaborate more on that, like each and every single day for that period of six years, I was getting stuff thrown at me. Words and physical stuff, bro. I got jumped. People pull up to my house to fight me. I got spit on. It was crazy. Each and every single day, I was getting physically, verbally abused. So once I get out of that, I'm like, ain't nobody finna put me back in that. If I got disrespect, if I got to put my hands on anybody, I'm going to do it because nobody going to make me feel like that. Because I, 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 it was nice, and I ain't ashamed of minutes. I went to bed crying. I, I was mad. I wanted I wanted to be here to be, to be real with you guys. Like you mentioned before, this is not your life. You can't take it. I did not want to be here. And I I, I struck through it. And last year, God was able to reveal with me, like, why I'm angry, why I got this attitude, why sometimes I can be very disrespectful to the people around me because I'm hurt. (laughs) I'm hurt. I I have not healed those wounds. Uh, And 
I'm 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 working on that. Uh I don't I feel myself getting emotional. <laughs> uh, you know what's so crazy? Like, I'm, I'm working on that because it's so hard for us to say ouch. Somebody hurts us, it's so hard to say ouch. Instead, you do me one, I'm gonna do you two. That's the mentality. And we gotta get that worked out of us. That's nothing we can do on our own. We gotta let the Holy Spirit have full access, full control. Yo, you hurt me, that hurt. But none of us wants to be vulnerable like that. Everybody feels like we gotta protect ourselves, we gotta stand up. Like, I mean, there are some instances where, all right, come on, you gotta, you know, somebody's coming at you, you gotta protect yourself. But if somebody's just like, you know, you 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 just, ouch, that hurt, that hurt. And, and, and I've read for years, the scripture, be angry and sin not. And I'm thinking, you know, that whole thing is if somebody makes me angry and I go hit them or kill them, then that's the sin. But if my words lash them, I feel like that's that's even worse because the pain that they get from a punch or me killing them, it goes away. They can't feel it. But my words, it it resonates for so much longer. And I'm hurting them my aggression to it so it, it's, it's big you know but at first i was like really torn and beat up by it. even even talking to you now i'm still like trying to get over it like i because i've been i've been this way for years and it's just like all right now i'm like okay be lifted up brother like be encouraged because now that you made aware now you know just keep working just keep chomping away at the bit and when i say work i mean it's keep reading keep eating. And that's why I said to you, I'm at the point where spiritual food is more important than physical food for me, because I want to be changed and not for my own sake, but for my loved ones and, and for God, the father to be glorified. Same thing with me. It's like, not, not even just that bullying situation. Um, that do play a, a huge part in my anger, my attitude problem, but it's, it's a whole bunch of, uh, I just stuff that play a part in it that I'm actually learning about now. And and the reason um not only that God brought that to my attention, but uh as a result of that bullying situation, I became the bully. I became the one that was beating people up, put my hands on people, um saying all that mean comments, hurting people physically and mentally. I became that person and I I changed because I didn't want to be that person no more. Uh, not only that, I was getting in trouble every single day. Whether it was school, home, church, I was a problem wherever I went. You know, like how people say, like, um, problem follows somebody wherever they go. I was the problem. <laughs> I was the problem. So I was, wherever I went, it was, it was going to be a problem. And I know the mentality was going to get me in jail. I knew it. It, it was going to get me in jail because uh good thing in New York, the neighborhood where I was in was a safe neighborhood because if I would have, you know, used that energy, I would have got killed. And definitely, I, kn I knew for, for sure because something I learned is an undisciplined um, young man becomes an undisciplined adult. And once you're an undisciplined adult, you most likely going to go to jail. Cause you're not gonna buy by the law or wherever that's going on, and I never, I never wanted to um be put in handcuffs or go to jail or nothing like that, or I just continue to hurt the people around me. So I, I just I worked on changing and my anger problem and my attitude problem. It's still here, but it's not as much as it was, but it's still strong. So I I, I got to work on that. And to everybody out there, just be vulnerable with yourself about your situations. Like, I do, I do little meditations where I'm listening to rain music, uh, the sounds because since I was little, it's always helped to calm me. Like, I don't know why. Since since I was younger, living in Ghana, anytime it's raining, I like to be in my bed right next to the window. It, it it was it was relaxing, or you just be outside running in the rain, just enjoying yourself. And I be fully vulnerable about myself. I talk about situations how I felt about the situations 
and just be fully going away. If I got to cry about it, I cry about it. If I'm angry about it, I'm angry about it. But I always remember, like Gio said, the word says to be angry and sin not. So, and last night, I did one of those sessions last night where I just be fully vulnerable. It wasn't about the bullying situation. It was about something else. But I be fully vulnerable myself. And I do it for however long. If it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I don't care however long it is, I'm going to do it. Because I know it's been helping me understand situations better. Uh, that's how I was able to understand the bullying situation better and how much it affected me. Because I went, I just sat down and be fully wrong by myself. What happened? How did I feel? How did I feel when I got spit on? How did I feel when they pulled up to my house to fight me? How did I feel when I got jumped? How did I feel when I got hit? How did I feel... When each and every single day I was going in, they were saying something to me. How did I feel when they was calling me a bowler boy, uh, African booty scratcher, all that, that um, negative thing? How, how did I feel? Be fully transparent with myself. And it's, it's a part of the healing process. Because you can't heal if you can't be vulnerable. You can't heal if you can't be vulnerable. It's, it's not going to work. Because if you keep trying to hide your feelings, keep trying to hide your... um your word it's, it's not gonna work i don't know how we got into this but we got it <laughs> but uh, we can't relate really... it's, it's all right it's, it's it's a part of it like you i think the biggest mistake or misconception of being a christian is going through it by yourself it's not the way god intended for it to happen like he made us brothers and sisters for a reason. He made us family for a reason for us to help each other. Like iron sharpens iron. Like we, we, I am my brother's keeper. Like we, we have to help each other out. And the thing is that we're so afraid of sharing our circumstances with one another for various reasons that are all based off of lies. Like, I don't want to share my truth with you because I'm either embarrassed, um, I'm ashamed, um, I'm afraid that you're going to judge me and look at me differently. And and it's just like, that's not what God had in mind for us. It's not what he had. That wasn't the plan. It was for us to share our, our hurts and, and, and our issues and concerns with one another so that we can console each other, um, love on each other, pray for one another, intercede, you know, like just be there. Like, I can imagine if it's, I can imagine if you never had to worry about you because I was so worried about you. And I never had to worry about me because somebody else was so worried about me. It's just like the world would just be filled with love. Like we would have no lack. And that's how it was when the church started in the book of Acts. Everybody brought all that they had and just placed it in the church. And everybody didn't, no one lacked, no one had excess. It was just, everyone had exactly what they needed. And that's just the way it is. So it was just like, and that, that goes right into the next verse. It says, 18, it says, just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. Like he said, he's, so we're going out, he's sending us out to do what he did, to go and share the word, not to pound it into people and beat people over the head and judge people. Oh, you're not supposed to be doing that. No, 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 no. Just this is what the word, and you don't have to say the Bible said, you just, because you have it in you and you know it, it just naturally flows like a conversation. Hey, listen, this is what it is. And boom, boom, boom. All right. And then you leave them with that. They have the truth now. It's up to them whether or not they want to follow it. That's it. That's it. So we have the same responsibility. We, when we hear the word and, and we know it, we have the same responsibility to follow it, just like everybody else. And it says 19, he says, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that it can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. See, so now Jesus is already praying for people who didn't hear the word yet. He's praying for the world. Now, first he started praying for himself. He started praying for the believers. He started praying for their protection. And now he's praying for the world. God was praying for you before you even decided to accept him. Jesus prayed for you. I don't think people know that, that Jesus prayed for you. If Jesus prayed for you, then you know it's, it's a legit prayer. 
it's, it came from here, right? So he says, um, I pray that, verse 21, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you and as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. That's it. We got to become one with Christ. We have to allow him access inside of us to change us because we could dress up from the outside and change everything on the outside, but on the inside is just filthy. It has to be changed and washed and cleansed from the inside out. Verse 22, I have given them glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. People need to know, people, you don't have to necessarily all the time say, hey, I'm a Christian. They'll see it. They'll see the Christ in you. They'll see the God in you. They'll see it. Just how, that's it. Like just based off of what you do, how you act, what you speak, how you carry yourself. They'll see you. They'll see you. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am, then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Oh, righteous father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them and I will be in them. Jesus is just is praying for his disciples. Like, he just like, yeah, I prefer if they could just come with me to heaven, come with me to glory. But I understand that they have a work to do. I know understand the scriptures have to be fulfilled. So, you know, while they're here, I'm going to continue to pray for them. I'm going to continue to cover them, continue to provide and protect them. And I'm also going to pray for those who they share their word with so that they can have ears to hear the message and that they would receive it in their hearts. Jesus prayed for us the moral of the story today jesus prayed for us that's going to be the title for me i'm gonna be like i can i will i'll pray with you but jesus did you know jesus prayed for you did you know that this this was an amazing session not only to get into the um prayer of jesus but for us to both be vulnerable and talk about our issue how we both have an anger and attitude problem and it all stems from our experience in life but we as brothers we're able to sharpen each other iron sharpen iron jill jill know about the bullying situation i'm completely honest with, with him and he always gives me good advice scripture uh i know i know about this anger problem i did not know about this but i kind of figured it a little bit because i've seen a couple moments where like like them veins popping out in his head and like usually when I come, I'll leave that man alone. Not because just want to put this out, not because I'm afraid of him. Me, I'm just one of the type of person. Somebody angry, they're going through it. I'll let them do them, let them cool off. Cause you don't know how people could react when they're in that type of moment. So you just gotta lead them, let them be them, and then talk to them after. Uh I'm not an out of control angry. No, I know I'm not saying no, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just saying me, I just with anybody, regardless of you out of control, I just let you like let you handle whatever you gotta think, and then you're gonna be yeah. good after. Cause you don't gotta be an angry person. Like anger can bring out anything out of anybody. You don't gotta be that type of person to do something. Anger can make you do well if you allow it, my bad. If you allow anger to thing you, you can you can do anything because I don't know Gio nobody to beat somebody up, but you could get angry and beat somebody up. And I'll be like, wait, wait, that ain't Gio. That, that is not Gio. But and, and I, I, I want to have that same look, that same thought about me as well. I want to say, that's not Gio. That's not Gio. I, I, don't worry. I, I'm looking forward to the day where I can rightfully allow my emotions to do what God intended them for intended for them to do. And that's, 
God gave us emotions to receive and interpret things that happen in our lives, but he didn't give those, give them to us for us to react out of emotion, right? We re respond from the mind. When we say, let this mind be in us, that's also in Christ Jesus. We have to respond with the knowledge and understand that he's given us from our mind. Yeah, we feel the pain. Yeah, we feel the hurt. Yeah, we feel the rage. Yeah, we feel the anger. But that's not how we're supposed to respond from. We're supposed to respond from what the word says it's in our mind. It's a journey. It's a process. It, it like, it's lifelong. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's lifelong. It's not like a diet where I want. I'm gonna stop eating. For, I'm gonna diet. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's a lifestyle. Like this is, this is who I'm choosing to become. Choosing to be. That's it. I'm done. Um, amazing, amazing session today. This Bible study session was amazing. We're we're able to fully understand the um prayer by our heavenly Father. Um, and his son and just be be vulnerable uh, as I mentioned before everybody out there it's okay to be vulnerable uh, you just gotta find a perfect person to be vulnerable with because you cannot be vulnerable with every and anybody but once you find a person just be fully transparent and vulnerable about situations I recommend everybody just have a time set aside where you by yourself whatever you gotta listen to or if you don't gotta listen to something just be fully vulnerable about situations in your life. Uh, remember, be angry, sin not. It's okay to feel emotion if it's anger, sadness, guilt. Uh, just don't don't sin against the Father, and don't let those emotions affect you to a point where you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Or you you did something that is like that's not me. Be fully transparent with yourself. And just talk about a situation. Be vulnerable. It's, it's okay. All, all the guys out there, it's okay to be vulnerable. Real men cry. Um, that whole toughness is not going to get you nowhere. Being tough all the time is not going to get you nowhere. Because what I learned is that if you be tough all the time, you're going to use something to be able to um, endure. Endure? Endure um, what you're feeling whether it's drugs, weed, alcohol, you're going to refer to something to be able to handle your problem. And it's best to just handle your problem by talking about your feelings because alcohol can lead to death in jail. Drugs can lead to death in jail. Weed can lead to death in jail and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's just not worth it. Uh, we'll end off with a prayer by the the minister, um, Gio. That one, I just went from being a brother to a minister. Just that fact, I got a promotion. <laughs> you're real funny brother <laughs> but, uh let, let's 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 go into a word of prayer with the lord father god oftentimes such as this one i find it so difficult to put words together to express how greatly you are how great of a god you are how merciful of a god you are how you with such great power still considers us, still considers your creation. You consider those who believe in you and you even take the time to consider those who don't. Father, we're thankful and grateful for all that you have done, giving us the greatest gift that we could ever receive, your son, our Lord, our savior, Jesus Christ. We pray even now, Lord God, that as you prayed on our behalf, Jesus, that we would continue in the way that you have taught us, that you would continue to teach us your truth, continue to make us holy by hearing your truth. And I pray that we would receive your truth. Give us ears to hear, give us a mind to understand, and give us a heart to be obedient to your word, to your will, and to your way. We thank you for all that you have given us today. We pray that as you have blessed us, that we would be a blessing to those who are listening in. I pray that a life, a life would be saved. I pray that a life would be freed from bondage. I pray that a life would be encouraged and lifted up because of this 
session that we have had or any of the prior sessions. Father, continue to have your way in us. And I pray that we would continue to make ourselves available to you. We love you. We thank you. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming back. This is episode 37 of Bible Study. We're three more episodes from 40, 10 more episodes, well, 13 more episodes from 50. Continue to come along with us on this journey to be able to sharpen the iron, to be able to educate ourselves on the word, to be able to share our thoughts, our opinion, our guidance, our sermons, whatever the Lord have brought to our hearts. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe if you're new, turn on your post notifications. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send you a notification. This is Motivation for Young Christians. I'm out, guys. Have a blessed week. Enjoy. Spend time with God.